You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Always free and available on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. And today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use our code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase with the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. Chris, great to be back with you. Rolling through the week, we are diving back into the portal, of course. How could you not touch that hot stove for more than a day, more than half a day, maybe more than an hour uh, for some of you out there? So appreciate you riding through this week with us as we keep an eye on what's happening as uh, some visits lining up, uh, some already occurring, of course. And one thing we'll get in today is uh, maybe a bubble about to burst as far as Uh, One of the first gets for Texas Tech in this cycle. Also want to get to what we've seen happening up front along the offensive line so far, Chris, with another portal entry for Texas Tech. What we knew would be a busy position group has turned out to be so, so I want to check in with you on that. And then I want to get to a question that kind of steps away from the portal, but as it relates to Texas Tech and some others across the country, had this question I was discussing with a Matador mobster just yesterday regarding the future of scheduling. There's been much scheduling, weeping, and gnashing of teeth from SEC country. The poor, poor Crimson Tide. Oh, they're upset about the way their schedule is being treated, I guess. And I know we all feel terribly for them, but I'll get to that coming up uh, in just a moment. But first, to the portal hot stove, Chris. Uh, What's the latest on some of the developments? And uh, is it true that we could be nearing uh, maybe the first commitment for Texas Tech? I, I think that is uh, indeed, and depending on when you're uh, watching or consuming this uh, show, uh, it may be already officially out there or it, it, it would be close, but uh, sure, you kind of have to be a tea read or tea leaves reader. Uh, I screwed that up, but tea leaves reader this time of year uh, with, with, with all these things kind of connect some dots, but it helps to know uh, the right people and been doing this a long time and it's nice to get a, a phone call from somebody in uh in columbia missouri uh yesterday saying hey uh you guys had a guy on campus named cole wisneski from north dakota state i'm like yeah I'm familiar he's like well he just canceled his trip to uh columbia missouri he's going he's going to texas tech so um we will uh uh and, and he's a 6'4 215 pound uh db and and here's where I this is what is the gray area for me. Uh, I think he's a he was a FCS All American two years ago. He did not play at all this year because of an injury. So he had, I, I don't know when if he got hurt in the summer or or whatever. So he's kind of this was a a red shirt year for him. But I mean for a safety, ninety two tackles and eight picks. Uh, I think uh, like I said, FCS All American in twenty three. And, you know, do you use him if you're if you're Coach Wood and your new defensive scheme? Is this more of a hybrid close to the line of scrimmage type player? Is this a, uh, is this a boundary safety? Is this a, maybe we could play some outside linebacker with him? I'm not real sure exactly what you've added other than a really good football player. He's kind of a ball magnet with some size and. Um, North Dakota State still in the uh, the FCS playoffs, and they just they just churn out good football players and and winning seasons. But I think that uh, I think that is at least if my intel is correct, that's going to be your your first um, get. Um, and and you know it begs the question because I, I, as you start to try to follow this or figure out how it's going to work. This would seem to be like, a, and I don't, maybe there's some connection that we just don't know about or, or whatever it may be, but some of these guys, I think, are getting into this process going, I want to see it all. I didn't get to go through this kind of recruiting process as a high school player, or I'm going to see who offers me the most, or so if, if he, in fact, came here, first visit, and then you know, because I believe this was his first visit and we know he's uh, set up a visit uh, or had one set up to University of Missouri. What what else did he have? Uh, Was he just like, man, I just want to get this over with. I mean, you just don't know. Cause I mean, some of this, I don't know if I was expecting any quick word at all or not. 
And and that's up to tech too, because it's you you can play the game of hey, we need to know. We've got more kids coming in later in the week. If if you leave and you haven't given us a commitment or signed, you know, pen to paper on an agreement or a deal or whatever, however this is working, then you know what I mean? So like the timing of it is because unlike like national signing day, there is no drop dead deadline for a lot of these guys. I mean, you know, so they could theoretically drag this out. I guess you could drag this out until next fall if you really wanted to. Now it wouldn't be smart because you, you would theoretically want to be somewhere in the spring and go through spring ball and start to learn and pick up everything that you possibly could move and whatever, what, you know, get on with life. But, you know, there's no like end all be all on like, okay, this is when it's got to be decided. Uh, I think we'll point a lot to the beginning of the spring semester, but that's January, the whatever for, depending on what school we're talking about for tech, I'm going to just guess it's like right around there, you know, around, around mid January. So anyways, uh, this would be if, if if Cole Wisniewski is in fact uh, cast his lot with the Red Raiders, then this is kind of an exception. But it sounds like he liked what he saw uh, and, and everything about it. And Shield Wood now uh, potentially has some some help on the defensive side, and that that now checks a box on kind of a a DB need for you. All the moving parts, the ill-defined. Uh, deadline or finish line you're describing uh, and so many other things adds up to what makes this the most exciting rose ceremony ever. Uh, can't wait for uh, some of these pedals to be put in place and uh, we'll see what is to follow if he is indeed uh, the first. I um, I, don't, I don't know, Chris, necessarily, you know, what you would expect out of the early stages of it, but it would seem kind of like more of a uh, uh, an urgency is going to be there for some guys compared to other guys. I don't know what the level of urgency was uh, around this particular player, but coming from the program that he does, um, North Dakota State, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, as I talked about earlier in the week, you're just kind of expecting this guy to be, um, you know, made up of some good stuff as far as the locker room, being a teammate, football IQ, all these kinds of things are concerned because the program he comes from doesn't really tolerate uh, much less than that. I, I've always kind of had an idea as far as uh, the prep level is concerned for Texas Tech. There should be one scholarship just reserved every year for anybody that wants it from Canadian Texas, uh, just because I've seen so many tough sum bucks run through that football (laughs) program. So I just want to reserve one for anybody from Canadian. Maybe we reserve a spot for anybody from like the North Dakota states of the world out there and just say, if you got somebody that wants to be a Red Raider, We'll try it out because uh, that that's quality as far as the football that's played and the culture uh, that's typically been in place. So I hope you get a lot of that uh, with this edition. And I, I, you know, we we have seen the uh, the DB uh, offers go out uh, to quite a few. Uh, I think so. I I, th- I think that this Wisniewski ch- checks the box on safety. I think now the DB need left out there would be corner. Uh, so as you try to follow this stuff and don't talk yourself into, oh, they're done here or, okay, we're, we're completely finished with everything. I mean, just be careful about what, what is all happening. And, and again, be prepared to kind of pivot with your thought process as you try to follow yeah. this deal. It's not like a grocery list to where, uh, cause I think you could be having to go back to the store multiple times. Uh, you, you could have to go to a different store. Uh, you know, I mean, so there's just all kinds of uh, things going. But I would say that you came into this knowing you needed a, a safety and corner help. This at least checks the box on some of that safety need. But I think now corner still remains out there. Uh, so, you know, as we – but, yeah, Cole Wisniewski, man, six four two fifteen, Come be a ball hawk in Lubbock, Texas, man. You'll look a lot better in uh, red and uh, – black than you did in uh, green and yellow. <laughs> uh, let's flip to the other side of the line of scrimmage uh, for a moment. We had another entry into the transfer portal among that group of offensive linemen. First, today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Never sweat buying tickets to your favorite event again with Game Time. It's always a breeze using the Game Time app where you're going to find the best last minute deals. And I love being able to scout out of you from any seat before pulling the trigger. Of course, you're always doing it at the lowest price 
guaranteed. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it begins, which means you can finish off that final brat, that final beer at your own pace at the tailgate because game time is the place to find last minute seats to any event. Game time gives you the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets, but not just fast, also secure and simple to use. So right now, download the Game Time app and create an account and use our promo code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem our code Locked On College for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today for last minute tickets at the lowest price guaranteed. We had another entry into the transfer portal among that group of offensive linemen, uh, this one in Dalton Merriman. So between he and Buchanan, you are talking about uh, some guys that saw some starts and, and obviously played some major minutes for you in 2024. Um, I wonder if you were surprised by this entry. We talked a little bit about Buchanan already, but we, we knew this was going to be a busy spot, but I, I'm intrigued by these guys getting in there to this point because – it, to me, I, I'm kind of wondering if it suggests, hey, we were going to go find someone better no matter what. Because I feel like there's also, if you didn't feel that way, I feel like there's also still some like courtship with the guys you already have. Like, I don't, hey, man, you may still be in the running. Uh, you know, we don't know what we're going to find in the transfer portal. So maybe I'm reading too much into it. But what'd you make of uh, Merriman's addition to the entry list alongside uh, Ty Buchanan? I think I think Ty Buchanan and Dalton Merriman will find new homes. I really do. The, these are these guys are hard to find. They've got power four starting experience. They are upperclassmen, so they'll they'll be able to find a landing spot. This is not a question, uh, in my opinion. That it may not be exactly where they want to go, or they may not be guaranteed the right dollar figure or the right starting spot or whatever, but they will find spots. There's some of the other guys that have gotten into the portal that I'm like, good luck. You know, I mean, I, you, you, there's no guarantees because it. this is all a gamble. I, I think I'm not a hundred percent ready to say that they, neither one of these guys or one of the two won't play in a bowl game. So I don't know there. However, you have to think about the, 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 the part of this that, all these guys you're talking to, they're taking all these visits. So if you're going to play in a bowl game, you, you're skipping all of your visit time, really, uh, or, or or some of your potential visit time to where the first of the year would, would happen rather quickly. So a bit tricky. Uh, and and I, I don't – it's not going to surprise me at all if neither one of them plays in the bowl game for you. I do think – uh, I do think Caleb Rogers is going to play in the bowl game for you, so you won't be without all your tackles. And I think uh, it may be Jacob Ponton time, at least in this bowl game. Hmm. Um, uh, probably starter at left tackle. Maybe a Nick Fadig factors in there. Caleb Rodkey. I mean, you 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 know, we'll, we'll just kind of see what uh, what all how all that plays out. I do think you had a couple of offensive linemen uh, in initially. I think that you you may be close to landing one of them. And I think though that this list may be growing a bit on like need because of the Buchanans and the Merrimans that, okay, maybe, maybe we wanted two to three, maybe now that is three to four, you know, depending on what we get, uh, what is available, kind of how that, how we can put it together. So um, yeah, there's, there, there's, there's all of that. And then I, I our our guy Cody Campbell. Um, we talked about you know the the, the tweet interactions the other day, and uh, he is um, he was active uh, on the on the twitters yesterday, saying, "Hey, make sure you follow the the folks at the Matador Club." Uh, and then the Matador Club's popping out the the Tom Cruise uh, sunglasses from Top Gun. So you know, it's serious. Something's imminent. Uh, something's imminent. Again, if it hadn't already kind of. Yeah, come out by the time you're seeing this, um, or watching or listening or whatever it may be. So, uh, now the, the ball's starting to roll a bit, but not all of these are going to be like easy and, and be able to, to wrap up nice and tidy quickly. Some of these guys you're in on are heavyweights, and there's a lot of interest here, and there's now a lot of money out there, and there's a lot of starting spots or playing time available. So, uh, patience, uh, because you're you're in in this space now you're hearing the term outbid or we're we're in the bidding 
that's kind of the reality of where you're at in this gray area of before the, the revenue share rules kick in. You're kind of in this space now or this gray area before this house settlement is official that theoretically out there in, in the college uh, space right now, it's it's a bidding war for certain guys. Absolutely. What a fun time to be alive. Uh, this I time mean, is like all the other times, except we used to not talk about it. I mean, B- <laughs> BYU, BYU just signed a hoops dude for $7 million. I would say they won the bidding war. <laughs> That's that's what I would say. Yeah, the the, the well, bidding war was I mean, one. It's kind of like Charles Barkley said about Cam Newton. If we got him for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, that was a steal. That was bargain. A steal. Bargain. <laughs> yeah, you never quite know yeah. what uh, the monetary value will turn out to be, and that's kind of interesting. Just thinking about that bidding process, um, I'm sure coaches have got some reliable intel from program to program as to what real numbers actually are. I'm sure there's some of that, but that also has to be. In combination to to some of the intel just being uh, figments of imagination or agent speak or player speak, like hey, they're offering me this. All right, is that real or is that? I I don't know how widely these figures are shared among those circles, but uh, there's still obviously she already mentioned some gray area to it. So it would be kind of difficult to uh, to bid in something you don't quite know what what you're up against or maybe what the reality is of of what you're up against. Uh, interesting times to say the least. I don't mind it at all. I kind of, uh, enjoy the spectacle of all this. And, uh, if you're a fan of a program that's got some of the cash to bid with, uh, I don't know why you wouldn't enjoy it also. I I don't really, I mean, some people kind of find this, uh, appalling, I guess, repulsing to hear so much (laughs) cash discussed in a college football conversation. I just don't know where you've been for, I, I don't know, a hundred years or so. It, it just wasn't discussed, but to think it's totally brand new to this, I, I kind of find that hard to believe. Yeah. It's it's like, we're just not dealing with a uh, laundering or a black trash bag or a suitcase or, Hey, it's, it's, yeah. it's buried, buried out in the sand. Um, <laughs> there's, I, I left something for you, whatever, whatever was right. going on all these years. Um, so uh, uh, can I, I ask uh, you, one more offensive line question before we hustle on along. Sure. Uh, Caden Carr's entry, were you, were you surprised by that at all? Uh, was he a guy that was getting a little buried on the depth chart, or what context was he even in as far as the roster goes? I, uh, I've known Caden for a bit, knew, knew his older brother, uh, Tyler, uh, who played for Tech, and you know, basically was a part of the broadcasting team for Caden's senior year at Lubbock Cooper. Um, very physically gifted player. Uh, I think uh, I'll just uh, I th- I think that it, this was one of those situations where he had clearly been passed up on the depth chart. Uh, I think that if I'm if if you look at it, did did Caden travel uh, to a lot of the road games? In other words, did he make the travel squad? The answer was no, uh, especially at the back end of the season. And I like this young man. I I think he's got a, a lot of potential, uh, but potential's tricky. And I think when you empty the bench uh, at the end of the West Virginia game and there's true freshmen out there ahead of somebody like him, and they had talked about moving him to center just to kind of try to help him, it's just not a name. And I, I was as curious as anybody just because I knew this player as a high school player, and I watched him – play really good football his senior year. And he is every bit of 6'5", 320. But it just, uh, I mean, what you have to understand is they are desperately looking for offensive line help. I mean, desperately. You want pieces that can help you in the future, right now, uh, and, and the in-between. And you, you heard a lot about Ponton, you heard a lot about Holton Hendricks. You heard a lot about Ellis Davis, Nick Fadig. Um, he was, remember when I said to you on one of these shows that when they signed, uh, was the Cardi kid, the extra offensive lineman on signing day, he was like the sixth. You remember this? Yeah. The, the kid that was, uh, I guess was he, he was the teammate of one of your, one of your, your freshmen and everything. And I said, you better be careful if you're like a redshirt freshman or a redshirt sophomore and you're 
and you're not playing right now, you're not really being talked about or if, if people have passed you up because there's limited spots. And I wonder here if that's exactly what's in play. Gotcha. I think I think that it's not going to surprise me at all if Caden Carr goes to FAU and plays for Coach Hamby and Coach Kitley. Um, and and I hope if he does, I hope he goes and crushes it. Uh, I hope he goes and does really really well. But uh, I guess I would tell you I'm not surprised that he, his name was in the okay. portal, and I'm yeah. really not surprised about Merriman or Buchanan either. Uh, Garrett Morphis is another one that we've never really talked about his name, uh, a younger piece. Um, I just happen to know. Caden and and all that and I think there's a lot of background there because his brother and and all that but his brother ended up leaving Texas Tech and went to I think it was like University of Hawaii or something so um, I just with Buchanan and Merriman I'm just really wondering if there was a message conveyed and maybe you can tell us um no I think these guys processed or because they were starters so I'm just thinking if I'm already a starter I would imagine approaching every offseason like well no matter who they bring in I'm competing for a chance to start, and I, I don't know what, what's. Is there any more context I'm missing? Oh, I I think that they had started games. I don't think that they would have in any way, and I think they knew this were considered a starter next year. I think that yeah. they. What did Cody Campbell say? I will. I think that they have to understand that portal. Uh, it, it's a tool and again it goes both ways and so I might want to I'm in no way trying to diminish either one because I think in some ways you would have loved to have had them here as protection as insurance as just man they've got starting experience they kind of know uh, most of our system although your system may change slightly but I think that they know that I mean they're you, you, they, they have social media. They see how many offensive linemen you've offered. They, they're probably standing out there going through practices. If they were going, looking over there on the sideline, and, and, and some dude in a Western Carolina jacket or an Illinois State <laughs> letter jacket, going, yeah. "Damn, okay, I see how it is." I mean, so you know, you you have to, and it, it's all a gamble. Maybe they, maybe they get out there and they find that there's not anything better for me. Maybe they get out there and like they find the home. Like I think that they will 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 have uh, you know that they'll easily find. Maybe that what's being offered is like man. After after consult, uh, I think that you know I'd rather come back here where I kind of know what what all I'm getting into and I know my coach and I'm going to give it a go and you know try try to try to battle for playing time or a starting spot or whatever it may be, but. Yeah, there. This is a two way street, and I think the 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 program, the the uh, personnel department is playing one side of it. These guys are so everybody's trying to do what's best for them. So I think that's probably what the the these players are seeing. All right, yeah, they, uh, they were not guaranteed to start next year. In fact, I think you would say if you could, we don't want either one to start. We we have to have better. We are aiming to Well, get so that's better. kind of what I'm, mm-hmm. I'm wondering about. Like, is there that thought like, hey, we're going to find somebody better, I guarantee it, no matter what. So here's your, here's that's, your bus ticket or whatever. That's but the goal. even if you weren't guaranteed to be a starter, I'm just still thinking like somebody that did start um, and more than one, not just an emergency situation necessarily. I'm just like, well, it's the transfer portal. So i I feel like I'm going to compete with somebody from the transfer portal because most of these guys, especially if you're coming from a power four program are in the transfer portal for a reason, uh, maybe because it didn't go too well, especially unless, again from the power four category category, unless you're the Maurice Rodriguez's and you wait out this cycle and you're one of the last guys left standing <laughs> right. and somebody's like, damn, we gotta, we gotta have somebody. And this dude started games in the Big 12, either one of them, you know, you could say that about. I mean, there, there's that part yeah. of it, too. You know, sure. I mean, how quickly are you trying to get, get get to where you want to go? How quickly do you feel like you want an answer? How quickly does a program want an answer? Because somebody out there is going to be left going, damn, this musical chairs game sucks because there's no chair for me to sit in. Right. You waited so too we, long. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that that's just the way it's going to go. And yeah. I think Tech learned their lesson there. And I think they're trying to be very active and trying to get things done as quickly as they can. So they there are plenty of chairs left uh, to sit in, but they kind of got, for the most part, what they would have wanted. Gotcha. 
Interesting. Okay, before we get out of here on a different subject, uh, I wanted to throw this thought or question at you, one that I was uh, texting back and forth with a Matador mobster about uh, as it relates to college football scheduling. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle all the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers can bet only $5 and get $150 in bonus bets. If you win, the FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL and a whole lot more all in one place. So when you get a hunch, a gut instinct in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more all on the same page where you place your bet. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a gut feeling again and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. As it relates to college football scheduling, and this is kind of on the heels of so much conversation about how schedules are viewed in and out of conference uh, following the college football playoff selection committee and related to Texas Tech specifically, of course, because you play in a league with nine conference games. There are others that do not. Um, But Garrett was asking this question, Chris, whether or not we would see or could foresee a future where nine game leagues would actually dial that back. Uh, if you didn't see eight game leagues adding another to their conference schedule, I do just personally two cents think that this has always been uh, one of the biggest hurdles to overcome as far as the postseason is the fact that you can't even get close to lining up on what a schedule looks like among power four programs. That's almost a non-starter in and of itself. But what do you think? Could we be in for changes either from eight to nine or maybe nine back to eight at some point in the future? I don't know if the Big 12 is in a position to to decrease their conference schedule. One, because this comes down to TV inventory. I think you've agreed to deals that um, they expect a certain amount of inventory. And I think that they there's a certain amount of games and windows that they need to fill. And I think that was something that uh, is kind of baked into to your contracts. I don't know if you're in a position to to decrease it. Uh, I, uh, there's several thoughts here. It's not right to me. I don't really want to hear anybody in the sec whining about this or that when, you know, and all the tiebreakers and everything like that, because there's so many tiebreakers because they only played an eight game conference schedule. Um, I think that they, you know, they went back to the TV folks and kind of talked about increasing their nine game or to a nine game and the the money just didn't make sense. So they didn't do it. Well, there's ramifications for that. Uh, I wish that every power four league was playing the same amount of conference games. I think that would uh, clean it up a bit. So it would be more same as, uh, but for all the, the sec talk, and they do have good teams and and, and programs in that league. I'm not trying to diminish that, but some of it is, when, you, when you're playing, you know, Weber State in November the 10th and everybody else is playing like a conference, it, it's just a bit different. Um, I'm and glad not- you bring that up because that's another part of this scheduling conversation. I feel like nobody even talks about it. It's always been a problem, the timeliness of winning and losing. And, of course, we're dealing with voters and committees, so you're going to run into these problems. But, Chris, it's always been also about when you lose. And that's Sometimes. just one late-season weekend where the SEC is guaranteeing – they ain't off. losing. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I wonder if conferences may want to try to uh, copy that at some point in the future if you're talking Big 12, Big 10, or ACC. The, well, and, and there's a lot of, uh, I think, Big 12 coaches that have gone on the record and said that the SEC, they have it figured out. They were they were smart with this uh, with this process. Hmm. Um, and, and this is there's a lot to get into here. Like, we can get into rankings and when you lose and all this stuff, and some of it is just so dumb and frustrating – and and uh, what 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 I think points to some people feeling like the sport is broken a bit, uh, you know, and, and some of some of the things that are just frustrating about it or inaccurate or unfair, whatever. Uh, but I I'd, I'd be willing to bet you that at some point there there's going to be a rub here between everybody needing to play the same amount of conference games between will conference championships still be a thing because they're going to expand this playoff that's happening uh there's there's too much money and you're going to get 
whether it's to 14 or 16, but there's going to be more than 12, like in, in two years. Okay. Mm -hmm. We may get two years of the, of the 12 teamer. And, you know, it goes back to that conversation we had where it's like, man, if you're like, and I would ask you this, remember that, that conversation that was getting tossed out out there about, Hey man, the SEC gets four automatics, the big 10 gets four automatics and the big 12 and the ACC get two automatics. As you look at it now, does that look so bad? I, I don't know. A uh, part of me says, you know, because the SEC only got three in this year. But I mean, like, if you're telling me that uh, if you're going to stay at 16 and you get two in every year, I may take it because honestly, the, the in most years, the SEC is going to get four in anyway. So I think you're only helping your own situation, not hurting it, no. because I just don't think they're going to look to give a, a Big 12 team a second bid or certainly a third bid in most years. That's just not, it's just not the way it's going to be. It's not fair. It sucks. This is where it's at. So that comes all in back into the scheduling and all those things. But I think to answer your question, I don't know if the big 12 is in a position to decrease just because of TV inventory and because of the, the contracts that they're under, because these partners, you know, they, and, and, and you've seen the, the thing get amended a bit with TNT and we're going to, mm -hmm. we're going to, sub license some inventory here and there and all that stuff. So maybe there is something in there that would allow them to kind of amend it. I don't think that's right because you're talking inventory here. Yeah. Uh, and I just, uh, I, I don't, I don't see it. You also may see um, everybody mandate that you got to go play like a power four team, at least one game in the non-conference. I think that's pretty standard and that may be written into some language, whether it be college football playoff or each league or something like that but everybody pretty much operates that way anyways but you know, there, there's that's a like we talk about a lot of these topics that's a loaded question with a lot of moving parts there to it and i would be uh one to tell you college football is not broken college football is arguably in its in as healthy of a position as it's ever been i, I don't get the people that are just again back to weeping and gnashing of teeth about it's broken what's broken about it you're about to have the best postseason you've ever had uh, someone, I think it was Gordon Gee from West Virginia saying, oh, we've shifted now into a consumer mindset. Well, no. What do you think has been building all these facilities? The freaking consumers watching this crap on TV and the TV's giving you bags of cash. You should be in a consumer mindset. And I've been frustrated for decades that the consumer's never even been on a list of objectives as far as who to serve within uh, all of these pursuits. So I don't find it to be broken at all. Somebody's always going to be bitching. Number 13 is mad because they weren't number 12. Number 17's mad because they weren't number 16. Number 25's mad because they weren't 24. Lose fewer games if you're upset with the position that you're in. And those bitching the most, at least that I've heard, in Tuscaloosa and in uh, Oxford, Mississippi, you've got some of the worst losses uh, of those who are even in the conversation. Yeah, don't go losing to Vanderbilt, man. I mean, don't the, lose the, to the at home. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the only thing that I do think is broken about the college football playoff in a way, I hate that we still have to defer to committees because that's just a new name for like rankings and things like that, voters, whatever. I, I don't know how we ever get away from this. Um, similar schedules would be a start, I guess. But either way, the only thing that I think is broken is reserving the landscape or the real estate that you do for group of five representatives within still such a relatively small field. To me, a group of five champion, or if there were ever two, should only ever be the final spot in the entire damn thing. A second place, third place in these power four leagues. I ain't putting a group of five champion ahead of them. Why? Just because? Just because they <laughs> lost closely to Oregon and you don't know anything about the difference in UNLV or like Baylor being on your schedule or the Mountain West week after week after week versus the Big Ten week after week after week. Like I get the little convenient internet punchline, Big 12, group of five league. They might as well be the Mountain West Conference. Well, explain the 75 to $80 million difference in some cases in what is invested in these rosters between those types of programs. Oh, it's, the, it's a the, joke. The money is the money is drastic. Massive uh, difference. The drastic, rosters are different, and the week-to-week-to-week yeah. to week to week grind of those conferences yeah. is night and day. So that's the only thing that I see broken about it. First round buy for a Mountain West champion? Give me a freaking break. We're back to the BCS where essentially, in some ways, these group of five schools should shut your mouth, say thank you for what you get, because you're gaming the system right now. And I remember once upon a time, like Utah and all these programs in the Mountain West, they're like suing everybody. They're mad. I'm like, dude, you should be wearing a ski mask to go collect what you're getting from the BCS <laughs> right now, because you're jumping like 10 others 
who had like maybe a nine or 10 win season in these power conferences and are certainly facing a more rigorous grind than you. So I find the sport at large to be as healthy as it's ever been. If you are serving the consumer, oh no, think of the bowl executives, I guess, and maybe send them a donation or something. But I don't, I don't really identify with those who feel like it's broken all of a sudden, Chris. Can it be improved like all things, I'm sure. But uh, I think we're in for what's been a great regular season and will be the best postseason from an entertainment standpoint that we've ever had. Tell me if I'm right or wrong in the YouTube comments. I'd oh, love yeah. to hear from you. The uh, You ever see the movie The Program back in the day? Oh, yeah. With James Caan. Yeah. And so James Caan was the, was the coach, uh, RIP, by the way. Um, and he said something to the effect of, they were in some hearing or whatever, and he's like, you know, 80,000 people don't show up to see a damn chemistry experiment. It was some academic hearing about one of his players or whatever, and I thought that was funny because uh, uh, my man Gordon Gee uh, did say along the same lines. Did the same thing. Everybody just wants to know who's who we're hiring to be the football coach. They don't worry about who we're hiring to teach chemistry. He just I'm said like, this week he can't get 65000 to a physics experiment. I'm like, no <laughs> kidding. No kidding, dude. I mean, the, the last time I shook his hand in person, because I've actually met this man uh, uh -huh. in the front row uh, at the Coliseum there in Morgantown, uh, blue and yellow bow tie, yeah, blue, blue sport coat with the gold buttons, khaki pants, and then he had the blue uh, like suede shoes with like yellow. In, I mean, he was like uh, all West Virginia yeah. out, but very academia. Real jack wagon um, guy that doesn't have a television in his living room. And, I'm sure. and, and like and like the circle glasses and everything. He, like he's that. been one of the biggest obstacles to progress all along. I don't care what his quotes say. He today. is. He he's said no at one point Scooby in time, now. playoff over my dead body, and I don't know if he's well, fit that description yet. But here we are. He's just he's a zombie. He's just walking. <laughs> yeah. He's he's no Lawrence Skubinick. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, our guy's got a TV in his living room, I imagine. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe a bookshelf. Uh, all right, Chris, appreciate the time as always, man, the insights. And we'll be back to it on the other side, I'm sure, as we could have some action upcoming. So uh, looking forward to it, and we'll see you for the next one. Guns up. Uh, keep your head on a swivel, people. Things are happening. <laughs> always. Get subscribed on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode. If you are interested in communing, fellowshipping, conversing with us beyond just our precious time here on Lockdown Texas Tech, hit the show notes, find the link to become a Matador mobster at your one-on-one -on -one direct line to Chris and myself with text sent straight to your phone. Appreciate the mobsters for being out there, the everydayers for being out there, even those who just showed up and you don't know how you clicked on this link. Thank you for being out there as well. Come on back real soon. Thanks for the time as always, and we hope to see you back for the next round on Locked On Texas Tech.